In parts of rural Afghanistan, the battlefield is everywhere, even in the schools. The next generation is hostage to a power struggle between the Taliban and the government. Recently, the Taliban demanded the closure of some schools in two eastern provinces. In Ghazni, it was in retaliation for a government ban on motorbikes, often used by the insurgents. We recently filmed an Afghan soldier disciplining a villager for breaking this rule. But in neighboring Waldak province, locals say the Taliban were more compromising. Our cameraman visited one school in which we won't identify people for their safety, where the Taliban forced the school term to start late this year with one big condition. They had to have a Taliban minder oversee the syllabus, a school teacher says. The Taliban are fine with us as long as we do what they want. They tell us what to teach and what not to. If we don't do what they say, they have a representative who comes checking things. They have increased the number of hours we teach religious subjects in a week and decreased other subjects like English. If we didn't, they would threaten teachers and it's very much possible that they would close the school down. But some were happy still to be able to learn. The Taliban have only increased the religious subjects in our day-to-day -day schedule, this pupil says, which is very good as people should learn religious subjects. A deputy education minister told CNN that in areas where the Taliban had more control, sometimes the government let them influence the subjects taught to keep the schools open and even check student attendance. He said this wasn't a deal, just flexibility that kept schools running. Our cameraman met this man who said he was the Taliban school's representative, one of many across Afghanistan, he said, implementing instructions from Taliban leader Mullah Omar. We didn't allow school to be open here at the beginning of the school year because we wanted them to change. Then we had a big meeting with the school officials and concluded with them to allow school to start. But teaching should be according to our principle and Islamic principles. They accepted that. We have only increased Islamic subjects, so even when a person becomes an engineer, he should have enough knowledge in Islam. Whatever exactly happened in Wardak, it's symptomatic of broader fears of the Taliban getting back under the skin of daily life in Afghanistan. This Taliban representative did oppose girls' education, but the fact they let the school open at all, whereas before they've insisted on religious education, shows a curious kind of evolution in the Taliban. Sometimes they choose moderation. They didn't want to shut the school entirely because that would be unpopular with locals. They just wanted to remind everybody who's in control of it. How long this moderation lasts and how far it extends is uncertain. But what is clear is, as NATO eyes the exit after a decade here, how far from its original promises so much of Afghanistan has fallen.